So we're going to continue our conversation, switching gears here. Um, last week there was a shooting in San Bernardino and it was a pretty serious topic. A man went to a school and shot his estranged wife and along with that he also shot two children and himself. Uh, the woman died as well as one of the children. So a uh, pretty serious topic it deals with domestic violence, it deals with gun violence as well and so we really wanted to take a look at the situation of domestic violence and gun violence and how it relates here in Rhode Island. So with that I'd like to introduce Jennifer Boylan who is with Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America and I believe that she is here in the studio. Hi, how are you? Jennifer and Molly, so nice, nice to meet to you. Meet Molly. Come on in, there's the red mark for you. Um, so we're really talking about domestic violence here. We're talking about gun violence, um, both abroad and really here in Rhode Island. So that's what we want to focus on. So tell me a little bit about how Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. How did it start? So it started um, as a Facebook page on the day after the Sandy Hook school shooting. Um, it was founded by Shannon Watts, who was a stay-at-home mother. And on the day after Sandy Hook, she went looking for... Uh, some kind of group that she could join. She was looking for the Mothers Against Drunk Driving, but for gun, yeah, for yeah. guns and um, for gun control, basically was the term um, at the time. And she couldn't find one, so she started her own group, and it's what's today is Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. Okay, and I was talking to someone else about this topic and about this issue and, and brought up your group and they thought, mm -hmm. oh, so it's like mad only for gun control. So it's a good, it's a good simulation. Similar model, yeah. I mean, we feel like um, mothers are the ones that uh, are fiercely protective of their families and their children and uh, have a, a huge role to play in making our world safer. And do you think that there is a gun violence problem in Rhode Island? Is there one? There is a gun violence problem in Rhode Island. Um, I, I do, uh, I am very aware of it. Um, we know from our friends at the Rhode Island Coalition Against Domestic Violence that over a period of about 10 years, there were 54 domestic violence homicides. So um, there's definitely a gun uh, violence problem in Rhode Island, just same as in the rest of the country. Um, and we have a unique state, we're small, but 54 lives from gun violence, for domestic violence only, so that's not even looking at all homicides. Yeah, not, that's just with guns that we're and talking about. And domestic violence. And homicides. domestic violence. Right. So, staggering numbers that we're talking about here. Um, let's talk a little bit about to what you're currently doing in Rhode Island. What are some top priorities? So right now, it's the legislative season. So um, our top priority is legislation, and it's around domestic violence um, and gun violence. So we have been very involved with a bill that's up at the State House. It's, this is my third year working on it. I think this bill has been around for even more years before that. But it's a bill that will, at its most basic level, take guns away from dangerous domestic abusers, people who should not have guns. And I can tell you, you know, more or less. Tell me how much. Detail yeah, no. Know. I mean, let's go into it. Let's talk about. Okay. The, let's talk about these topics because okay. these are things that we're seeing in the news constantly, yeah. and we're seeing. So, what is it going to take to get these things passed? And what are the? What's the opposition that you're fighting? So okay. let's let's take a look okay. at. So it's we you you personally have been working on it for three yeah. years. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about what's in the bill, um, and kind of, kind of start. Let's start. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what's in the and bill? I'm just going to have you scoot yeah. over so oh, we can make sure, sure we can see you. Yeah, sorry. Um, so what's in the bill? The bill does, um, it does a lot of things, but at its most basic level, it does two things. It would prohibit gun ownership or possession by someone convicted of a domestic violence misdemeanor crime. So right now there's a federal law that, ha that says people convicted of a domestic violence, violence misdemeanor may not own guns, but we don't have the mirror law here in Rhode Island, so we need a law in the books so that local authorities can prosecute and uh, enforce that law, that federal law, and we need a, a mirror image of the state law. And so it's a lifetime gun ban and it conforms to federal law. The second thing that this bill would do is it would take guns away from people who are subject to a domestic violence restraining order. So that's a short-term oh. restraining order, okay. so you probably know uh, You've heard of them, people who are afraid of their loved one, uh, it could be a, a current partner or an ex-partner or some family member, they would go to the court and ask the court to grant a restraining order to protect them from someone they're afraid of or being abused by. 
right now the judges have discretion and may choose to remove guns from that situation or not. So we need a, we, we know that, that the discretion is not working, that not enough people who should be disarmed are being disarmed, and so we simply want uh, to conform to federal law and have the same law here in Rhode Island. Is that, is that happening anywhere else? Uh, it, it is. I mean, there's lots of states yeah. that already have this law, um, or these kinds of laws. Uh, our neighboring states do. Um, uh, states like Texas have these, this kind of this, these really? laws in place. With the domestic, so, with the domestic domestic violence and restraining orders and uh, misdemeanor crimes. So it, it, there's a lot of work to do, but we've moms has been working on this issue across many states and having some success and. Um, it, it's a no-brainer. It shouldn't be controversial. Um, we are just simply trying to remove guns from dangerous situations, from dangerous people, people who should not have them. And so when you're moving forward through this and you're working on legislation like this, um, you're really facing, what is the pushback? Is it the Second Amendment rights? Is it the gun lobbies? What are you looking at in terms of pushback? Yes and yes. So. Um, there is a local gun lobby here, and also the national NRA. Um, uh, they are uh, very concerned about a slippery slope uh, if, if we start removing guns um, in, an, in, some, in, in an, a perceived unfair way that it could lead to more gun confiscations. So uh, we tend to get hung up on technicalities and uh, small details and not seeing the forest through the trees in terms of being protective of vulnerable people. Who has been your supporters? Have you had a good amount of support? Have you had a good amount of pushback? Like we who, have, who have ton, been we have this? a lot of support. <laughs> yeah. So we, we've done polling, so we know that eighty percent of Rhode Islanders wow. support this legislation. Okay. It is common sense. Um, we have a lot of uh, support among Rhode Island organizations. So um, this year we've we're working with the Rhode Island Coalition Against Domestic Violence, the Rhode Island Coalition Against Gun Violence, and other uh, different organizations like the Religious Coalition for a Violence Free Rhode Island, things like that, organizations like that. Um, we have support of law enforcement. Um, I think I think they've hit mayors. We have support of mayors as well, mayors against illegal guns. There are several mayors in our state who also are on board with this type of legislation. So we have broad support. And when it comes to the opposition, are you really just looking at those groups that you mentioned earlier? Yes, um, and of course the legislators who um, are supported by um, gun lobby uh, in terms of contributions, donations, and their, their map, the, the people that live in their uh, districts. Okay, and so what, what's the progress like so far? Because you said you've made it through, it's been three years getting to this certain point. Um, what's the status as of now? So the status of, as of now is um, our bill over the years has evolved. We think it's um, come pretty far. Um, it's been adjusted over the years to accommodate uh, concerns. And we have, it's been introduced in House and Senate and we're waiting for uh, hearings to start hopefully right after the, the break, they're, they're on break this week. Okay, and we're talking a lot about domestic violence. Um, of going hand in hand with gun violence. Is, is gun violence and domestic violence, when we're talking about these two going hand in hand, are we really looking at gun violence as a women's issue? Um, I think we are. Um, we know that women in the United States are more likely to be shot and killed than in um, other, high, uh, peer, other developed nations, um, high income developed nations. And we know that there's um, a gruesome connection between mass shootings that we're seeing so many of and domestic violence. Um, the latest study shows that 54% of mass shooting victims, uh, mass shootings involve some sort of domestic violence or family violence component. And that's more than half, that's a huge number. Yeah. And we also know that 25% of the victims of mass shootings are children. So it is a women's issue. I mean, we're mothers, uh, we don't want to see our children being shot and killed. Um, we can do much better as a country, and we should be doing it. Yeah, um, and that, that study that you were quoting is from every town, um, and every town it, for gun safety is Correct. an American nonprofit organization which advocates for gun control uh, and against gun violence. So Correct. we wanted to, to talk a little bit about that. Um, 
so let's let's talk a little bit more about that. Just kind of the threat uh, along the ideas of how how really how gun violence can be a women's issue um, because you know we're, we're talking about that in terms of um, whether it's domestic violence or with mass shootings. Um, how can women go about protecting themselves? We've you often hear sometimes that well get a gun. Well, yeah, um, that is, uh, you know, evidence shows that that is contrary to what um, is safest. Um, the presence of a gun in a domestic violence situation means that uh, the woman will be uh, more than five times likely to be shot and killed than had she not had a gun. So uh, we know from, da from data, uh, many, many studies, that more guns is not the answer to gun violence. Um, if more guns was the answer to gun violence, our country would be the safest country in the world. We have the most guns. Um, it's not the answer. So uh, women should not be running out to arm themselves. Um, they should be looking to stronger laws to protect them so that if they are in a domestic abuse situation, their, dis their abuser should be disarmed. And your organization isn't about taking guns away from everyone. It is not. Um, we are respectful of the Second Amendment. We know it's not going anywhere. Um, we simply believe there are certain kinds of people who shouldn't have guns. Um, those would include domestic abusers, criminals, children, and the severely mentally ill. And let's talk a little bit about some of the things that some of the things that you're doing besides just the legislation, because you have a lot of work that you're doing within the community as well. Yeah, we do. Um, we're doing a lot more. I mean, right now the focus is um, definitely on legislation, but we have um, a bunch of other things uh, volunteers around the state are doing. Um, it, we are gearing up for June 2nd, which is National Gun Violence Awareness Day, and we will be planning some sort of event. It's still um, incubating right now on June 2nd, and it's a National Day of Action. There'll be um, activities going on all across the country to raise awareness of gun violence as an issue. Um, we also do um, an educational campaign. We call it the Be Smart Campaign, and it's a national campaign that is focused on um, preventing unintentional child shootings. So you've heard of on the news oh where gosh, a toddler, devastating. you know, finds the gun yeah. loaded in their parents' night table drawer and shoots and kills himself, herself, a brother, a sister, or someone in the next room. These kind of things, unintentional child shootings, they happen about one every 36 hours in our country, and they're completely preventable. So um, the Be Smart campaign is our campaign where we educate parents about the importance of. Uh, making sure their children are safe, um, whether they're gun owners or not. It's, so it's, it pass, passes no judgment about whether you're a gun owner or not, but if you're a gun owner, here's what you should do to make sure your children can't access a loaded gun in your home or in a, in a friend's home or grandparent's home. And if you're not a gun owner, you still need to worry about it when your kids go and play at someone else's house or, or at a, a caregiver's house, how to have those awkward conversations about and, and you know, uh, do I feel comfortable sending my child to your house, or is it better just to have a plate at our house? Things like that, and also uh, a little That's bit. That's great information. It's fantastic information. It's a really great campaign. Um, it is uh, a message that's really well received. Um, when it comes right down to it, parents are the ones we need to keep our kids safe, and we can't rely on someone else um, to treat that issue the way we would. And it's really up to us. And this this program empowers parents. And parents, it, it teaches them what to say, how to say it, and to make sure their, their children, their child is not one of the 36, one every 36 hours that is unintentionally shooting someone or being shot and killed. And if people are interested in getting involved in your advocacy group, what can people do? Or maybe people are interested in finding out more information or want to have, if they have questions, want to know what they can do, what's the best way to get involved? So um, we have, of course, a Facebook page. Um, we're all over Facebook. We have a Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense America national Facebook page, and every state has their own Facebook page as well. Um, so we have a Rhode Island page. And um, if you want to join Moms, you can text, i got to look up the number, uh, you can text the word join to 64433, um, and then you will join your local chapter. So if you live in Rhode Island, you'd join the Rhode Island chapter, and then you'd get plugged into what we have going on around the state. Do you think as we move forward, I mean, guns are becoming a hot button topic in every state and both nationally. Do you think as we move forward that technology is going to be, I mean, you have to text to join this advocacy group. Yeah. Do you think that technology is going to be able to 
um, provide the answer to more and more issues. I mean, I, I've talked about I talked about drunk driving yesterday with one group. I talked about distracted driving with one group. Now I'm talking yeah. about gun violence and domestic violence with another group. And every every group that I've spoken with so far, technology has provided a key factor in some way or another. Do you think technology and gun violence could go hand in hand in, in some way or another? Do you think there's some way, whether it's some type of lock or, I don't know, but do you think there's some type of hope, whether it's with new legislation or, I, I don't know, do you think there's some way that we could work well, on something? So I, when you first started your question, I thought you were going about technology for organizing. Like yeah, I mean, Facebook, okay? yeah, even that. So that's where I thought you were going. You're really yeah. talking about like guns and uh, I don't know um, whether it's organizing for you advocacy yeah. like mass so, messaging or so I for mean, sure I mean our organization was founded on Facebook We're, yeah we live and breathe on Facebook yeah. we organize on Facebook um, we get our messaging out we educate people we mobilize women uh, moms members uh, people to come to the state house on Facebook so it's huge um, we communicate um, amongst ourselves we train each other uh, using the latest technology um, on how to get smart on the issue and how to best advocate. So it's it's a huge piece of what we do. Yeah. So I, and that's what I'm thinking. You know, my, my question kind of evolved as we we're going. Yeah. How technology, uh, one way or the other, going to shape the battle on yeah. one, one side or the other? Yeah. I, mean, I, I it, without Facebook, we couldn't. We wouldn't be where we are today. Fascinating. So, <laughs> well, thank you so much. I really yeah. appreciate you coming in. So, uh, Jennifer Bolin with uh, Boylan. Sorry, yes. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's a little warm in here with my sweater. Um, uh, so, I appreciate you coming on with Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America, Rhode Island chapter. So, she just gave you the information if you're interested in more. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Navigate Credit.